we'll go ahead and get this thing rolling. Um, right now, I am out of my office. We have no power and no, we have no electricity and no internet where we're at, and we won't for many, many days um, until our everything is back online from this ice storm that we had come through um, Friday night. So if anybody, um, if I have any glitches, Chris is going to help me with, take over the controls there, and I'll do my best to share everything I can. And um, I do appreciate everybody being here. Um, and we, we all know if you guys are struggling to tube wean, if you ever tried tube weaning, um, or maybe you're really wanting to start, this webinar is for you. Um, we're going to go show you with Krista. We're going to go show you how to choose a tube weaning program and how to know if you're ready for a tube weaning program. And I want to start off this webinar by saying we know that not everybody is ready to tube wean. Uh, my daughter, Karina Lozoya, she had a feeding tube, and it was her life depended on her feeding tube. There was no way ever she'd be able to come off of it. Um, our business, Patrick Peddler, um, we make feeding tube pads and accessories, and we, even though we love to see have our tubies and see all these pictures of our tubies, we still want to see all these tubies come off of um, come off the feeding tubes. So we want to support everybody that's out there, all the tubies, the ones that have to stay on it for the life supporting issues like my daughter and for those that are, that are going to be coming off the feeding tube. Um, and that's what we really want to do with this webinar. Um, so we all, a lot of us know the constant problems that are associated with feeding tubes. Um, we know that there's, that there's uh, we've got the, the blowouts, we have the explosions, the formula messes trying to mix a formula, the med pops po popping open, the med ports popping open, we know that can be an absolute mess. Um, been there, done that a thousand times. Um, and this is long before we ever developed our port pods and stuff, and we know that's just, you know, all that tape and gauze and everything that goes with it. Um, not to mention, you got to take a pump everywhere, the stained clothes, the carpets, the bedding, and everything that we go through. It's life as a tubi. Uh, we embrace it. We, we make it the best we can, and we love it. But again, those of us that can come off the feeding tube, we do want to try to encourage those that can. And if you've ever thought about it, um, you know, we want you to consider it now because uh, there are problems that are associated with feeding tubes. Um, and a lot of people don't really realize that there are problems from having an actual feeding tube, even though the feeding tube is there to relieve another problem. And it, it oftentimes causes a separate set of issues. Um, that's why a lot of times they'll give you one medication that causes one some issues and then well, those issues need medications to help solve that. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, it, they are blessings to have them, um, you know. But um, have you guys ever thought about all the hours, you know, with the preparation, the aftercare, and all that time that you spend prepping for feeding tube? You can really gain that back with your child, and that is something that would be great that we you can coming off the feeding tube. Um, so one of our presenters knew that she had to do something fast, and that would be Krista. Um, she had to do something fast to come off of her feeding tube. And she did a lot of research. Um, I read her her paper she's got, and we'll be emailing that that, that pay it, the PDF paper to everybody that's been attending here, and we'll have that ready. Um, we'll have that ready for everybody at, in the end. Um, and so we're gonna we're emailing that to everybody, and we'll have it here a link at the end of the webinar. And again, people, um, I still see more people are coming on. I apologize for any glitches that are going on. Um, I'm not kind of out of my room. I'm in Middle Tennessee where the huge storm has hit us and burned Crossville, so we don't have any power, and there's still hundreds of power poles down, and we're looking at about 30,000 people still no power, and we're facing freezing cold temperatures every single night. Um, so it's kind of a challenge. It's been fun getting here, so I'm just glad that I was able to make it in this room and make this webinar happen regardless. Um, I'm really dedicated, and I really love um, this webinar and what, what it's going to be bringing. Um, one of the, um, so one of the first things one of the, all I'm going to do is introduce Krista. Um, Krista has her son Eli. I don't know if Eli is still there in the background or not. Um, is he there floating around? You'll see Eli floating around in the background. And Eli was was tube weaned through this company called No Tube. Now Krista is, has her master's in education and psychology. She's working right now with her doctorate in family and human development, and uh, she is the mother to. Um, to, mother to the Tubi of Eli, I guess a former Tubi, Eli in the background there. And you can find her on Facebook at facebook.com slash no tube for Eli. And um, again, I apologize you guys aren't seeing my slides. Um, it's just one of the glitches I've had to make um, coming forward, working uh, from where I'm at in this room, where I'm at versus my actual office. Um, 
And the second presenter I wanted to, to show, to uh, bring to you is Marguerite Donut Shear, um, if I said that correct. And she is one of the, um, she's a licensed pediatrician, and she's weaned more than 3,000 tubies through this company, No Tube, who Krista's used. And that's a lot of tubies to wean. Um, and she's got 20 years experience. She studied medicine in Zurich, Graz, and took courses here at Harvard. She graduated in 81, specialization in pediatrics in 86. Her main focus is to try and understand the child's perspective and to encourage and respect the child's active participation. Um, and, and she wants to encounter, um, excuse me, um, she's also the head of the medical coaching and consulting and personally caring for the tubies in her program. Um, what I really like about NoTube myself is that they have a net coaching program, um, which is what Krista did. She, was, she did this from the comfort of her home in the United States, even though Marguerite is over there in Europe. She's definitely able to help you there. Um, so let me go ahead and um, go through some housekeeping rules for everybody. Um, with housekeeping rules, we're going to have a few giveaways. Um, we're going to have some feeding tube pad packs to give away. We're going to have some white papers that we're going to be publishing out to you guys. And all the winners of these things will be announced at the end of the web or in the emails that we send out to everybody. Um, we're going to have several white papers. Chris is going to have her paper, the four things you need to know when choosing a tube winning program. We're going to give away two seven packs of our bamboo feeding tube pads to some folks. And we have three no-tube uh, medical assessments that we're going to be giving away um, through, through no-tube. And um, so before we start all this off, I want to take a little poll with everybody. And we've got three polls lined up. Um, I want to find out what kind of feeding tube do you guys have. So if you can just take a few seconds and answer what kind of feeding tube um, you guys have. It should be launching in your, um, in your right now. Okay, there it goes. Uh, if you go ahead and answer this, we've got the um, NG, we've got the GJ, and we, we don't have a feeding tube, we understand, too. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the C, um, that's also a cystostomy tube. So you have the G, or that's for a G or GJ. Um, and we know some people are still getting their feeding tubes in, um, or they're, look, they're going to be getting a feeding tube and looking for a way out. So we do see a few of you have answered. Um, you don't have a feeding tube. But definitely, um, thank you guys for taking this poll with us. And uh, let's see if anybody else going to 85% of you voted so far. Okay. And then, um, again, for housekeeping rules, we're going to go ahead and with the giveaways, we're going to be emailing you those that information in the end uh, when it's all over with. Probably give me about a day to get these emails out because, again, I'm kind of out of my office right now. I have very limited Internet access, and I'm um, having to share that with other, other people in our county right now. Um, but we're going to give you everything we have in the next hour. Um, so I'll be, again, I'm, we're here to help you. If you have any questions, please leave those there. At the end, we will be recording this. We do encourage you to hang out so you can answer, uh, have your questions answered. But we will be recording this and passing this out to everybody and providing a link on our uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is YouTube forward slash Patrick Peddler, and we will have that for you. Um, so please, again, feel free to type in your questions or thoughts. Um, that you might have, and I'm going to go ahead and pass this off to Krista. And Krista, are you ready here? I mean, you pull those. Here you go. Okay, Krista, all yours. Okay. All right. Um, so um, this is my little guy Eli, and he's in the background. So if you guys hear or see him, um, he's he's back there. <laughs> Um, Eli was a born at um, 24 weeks gestation. He was a um, micro preemie. And after um, 102 days in the NICU, we went home with a feeding tube and on oxygen. Um, after um, a couple of weeks, we were able to wean him off of his feeding tube at home alone. Um, just basically bottle, you know, and then you bolus the rest of it. And he was eventually taking all of his bottles, and so we were able to pull the NG tube out. Um, at about five and a half months um, of age, he was, we were able to get him off of his oxygen. And about that same time, um, he also passed a kidney stone. Um, he does have residual kidney issues from being in the NICU, or from, from being a preemie, sorry. Um, and right about that same time, he also started just kind of decreasing his oral intake. And he got to the point where he um, got dehydrated. And so the doctors admitted us to the hospital. Um, they thought maybe it was um, that he wasn't ready to come off of the oxygen yet, but his saturations were fine. 
but he wasn't eating, so they put an NG tube in, and after a couple of days, still wouldn't take a bottle, so just said, let us, let us go home. We've done this before. We'll do it again. Um, we'll figure it out. Um, worked with our feeding therapist, and, um, and we're able to, um, um, you know, hopefully get Eli off of his feeding, off of the NG tube. Um, but sadly, that wasn't the case. Um, he's a little bit older now. Once that tube went in, he completely stopped eating, and he um, was also um, projectile vomiting quite a bit. Um, so um, a couple months go by. We had feeding therapy wasn't um, wasn't seeming to make a difference, and so they kind of suggested maybe you need um, a G tube. Maybe getting that tube out of his um, out of his mouth and his throat will will decrease all of that aversion, and and then he'll start eating again. Um, so we went ahead and did uh, G tube surgery at eight months of age, and. Um, nothing changed. He was still projectile vomiting. Um, we tried chiropractic care. He was on several different reflux meds. Um, we tried every elemental formula that I could possibly think of. Um, we did in-home feeding therapy. I love our feeding therapist. She is now our speech therapist and we still he see her. Um, um, we even tried a blended diet at one time. Um, nothing stopped the vomiting um, or made Eli want to eat. And um, by the time Eli was one, um, he was still being tube fed. Um, 109 doctors and therapy appointments during his first year of life. Um, so as you guys can imagine, um, not only are there developmental in implications for, um, for tube fed children, but there are also quality of life implications for, for both, um, both um, parents and, and, the, and, the, and the child. Um, as John mentioned, and I'm sure Dr. Uh, Dennett Shear will talk about, um, the feeding, feeding, um, tube feeding does contribute to um, developmental delays, sensory issues, and a host of other problems for kids. Um, Eli wasn't eating, so he wasn't getting all of that opportunity to experience the, all of the fine motor um, um, practice that kids who, who eat do. Um, also, because of the, the vomiting and the association he had with food of that consistency, he wanted nothing to do with um, any, anything that remotely looked like food. Um, and as, again, as I said, um, tube feeding takes its toll on the whole family, not just the child. Um, you know, John talked about explosions and all of that other stuff. Um, I kind of felt like I had gotten to the point where I was a shut-in because it's really hard to go to the grocery store or go on a play date with a friend when your kid's going to projectile vomit at any given time and you don't know where, and it's, it's hard to clean up and explain, and people are looking at you, and it just it gets, it gets to be quite, um, quite hard. And it, it was also um, taking its toll on our, on our relationship, um, on my husband and mine's relationship, um, um, and as I'm sure many of you guys have experienced. Um, so when Eli was 13 months old, we decided to ditch the feeding tube. Um, I'll go through you guys the process of, of how we found no tube later. Um, but um, basically, um, we found no tube. We did their um, medical review. They said Eli is um, good to wean. We started. Um, it was either day four or five when he started eating, um, and by day um, twelve, we were able to completely stop tube feeds. I do believe those numbers are kind of in the normal range for most of the kids that no tube weans. Um, yes, this all looks like junk food. This is not what he eats now, but. Hey, if they're gonna, if they want to eat at the beginning, you give them what they want. Um, he quite enjoys eating now. Um, six weeks after we started weaning Eli, his tube fell out in the middle of the night. Um, I had joked about it falling out <laughs> before the end of the year. It actually did fall out in the middle of the night. Um, it, stoma was completely closed before we woke up, so we didn't even have to worry about um, um, when the doctors or how long the doctors wanted to leave it in. It was gone. <laughs> um, Eli's development picked up uh, rapidly after we weaned him. He no longer had problems being on his stomach. He started crawling. Um, he loves, again, loves to eat. Seriously, this kid loves to eat. Um, plays with his food. Uh, sensory issues, that would have been an issue. for he, The sight of paint made him gag before. Now he plays with it, and it's not an issue. Um, I also get a, the question often about how does Eli eat now? Um, yesterday was an exception. He, I'm pretty sure he's going through a growth spurt. Um, halfway through the day, I was like, I need to keep 
keep track of what you're eating because we're talking about this tomorrow. So this is kind of a, a rough list of, of what he ate yesterday. Um, um, he ate a lot of food. Um, he eats a lot of normal food um, that a two-year-old would eat. I think he actually probably has a little bit of a wider uh, diet now than, than most two-year-olds, but, but he's doing great. Um, and so what I want to mention to you guys is um, four things that I think um, need to, that you need to consider um, when you are um, tube weaning. And um, those are the location of the program and the time it takes to wean, the costs involved, the uh, therapeutic approach and the experience of the, the weaning team, and then um, individual situations. Um, these are um, just a few of the many questions that I have listed in the little ebook that I wrote, um, which everyone will be available to everyone um, at the um, conclusion of the of the webcast. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, first of all, um, you need to consider where the program is located. Um, as long as, as also in addition to that, um, how long will it take to wean, and is there a wait list? Um, a lot of times. Um, most of the programs I looked at, with the exception of NoTube, um, they want you inpatient for six to eight weeks, and there's often a wait list of several months, um, which meant had I waited, um, Eli would not have been able to wean for several months. Um, there was also one program that wouldn't even look at him or try to wean him until he was two years of age. Um, these also play into um, the cost of the, um, the program. Um, traveling to a feeding program or tube weaning program um, costs a lot of money. <laughs> you miss work. Um, you have to pay somebody to take care of your other children or, or animals. Um, you have to pay for all of the, the, um, the hotels and, and um, food while you're there in addition to the program fee. Um, not all insurance covers these things. Um, so those are important uh, questions to consider. Um, no tube was actually the, not only was it net coaching, so we dropped all of the travel and the missing work and all of that stuff off of the list, but it was the least expensive program fee that we were able to find. Um, our insurance did not cover the, the cost of no tube. Um, initially, they told us that they would. Um, however, um, after Eli was too free and we went through months of going back and forth with the insurance company, um, my husband and I just sat down and went, you know what, it's, we put it on the credit card because we're, we're not rich people, <laughs> we didn't have the money laying around, um, but um, we put it on the credit card and we were more than happy to make that payment every month to, to, to be tube free and to be able to spend that time with our child um, because what we gained was, um, was enjoying the time we spent with him as opposed to, to um, being his caretaker. Um, we went from being caretakers to to um, to being able to enjoy our child as a parent and play with him and take him out places and experience new things with him. And that became um, very much worth that credit card payment every month for us. Um, also, um, as John mentioned, I, I have my master's degree in educational psychology and so um, this was kind of the important area for me outside of costs. Um, is the approach that the program used. Um, I do study learning and motivation. And to me, it's important, um, not only that Eli was tube free, and I think that that's probably the most immediate goal in most people's minds, but I wanted to him, him to have a lifelong healthy relationship with food and with eating. Um, I didn't want to have to ring a bell or give him a sticker or sit him in front of the TV to get him to eat every time. Um, a, that wasn't sustainable in the, in the long run. Um, I would be the only one that would be able to do that. Um, I'd never be able to get out of the house. And it, it didn't give him that healthy relationship with food. Um, and those, those kind of programs often depend on uh, what's called behaviorism or a behaviorist approach. Um, and when I found NoTube and started reading through their stuff, I was like, oh, this is autonomy-based. It teaches the child to self-regulate their own intake. This is what we need. This is what Eli needs to develop a healthy relationship with the food. And, and that, that was probably the most important thing for me was that approach. Um, also knowing what the long-term goal is for each child, um, what, what a successful wean means to the program, and what role parents play in the process. Um, again, my kind of thoughts behind all of those questions are, are in the ebook. Um, for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and, and finish up here. Um, 
Um, individual situations um, is another thing to ask about. What conditions encourage or prevent success? And um, what about reviews of the program? And can you talk to parents that are currently in the program or have gone through it? Um, it's very hard to find information on, on programs um, online um, or, or just anywhere, really, um, because they change so frequently. And um, they actually want to get you in their door before you um, and signed up with them before you are able to ask questions. And with NoTube, that was actually the opposite. Um, I was able to talk to the team. I was able to talk to parents that were currently weaning, that had weaned in the past. Um, and I was able to ask about reviews that I had found online. And um, that, was, that was really important to me to kind of be able to fully know what I was going into um, before I committed to it. <clears throat> Um, so, again, thank, I wanted to thank you guys for listening. Um, there's Eli's NoTube for Eli, his Facebook page, um, that I still post to. Um, if you go back to the very beginning, you can kind of follow our entire journey through, through tube weaning, and I kind of share a lot of my emotional stuff on there, too, about, about um, you know, wanting to tube feed him when, he, when, when we were going through there, but knowing that, that, that I needed to back off um, and let him do his thing. Um, and um, I'm here to ask, answer questions if you guys have any any questions? All right, I go ahead. I've got the. Uh, <clears throat> I'm back on here now, and I should have my. Let me pull my screen up. We've got several new people that have popped in since we first started webinars. So I want to say everybody, thank you for showing up again. Um, it was great to hear from Krista. There's definitely some things in there that I uh, I didn't even think about uh, with the things that she's brought up. And with NoTube, with our next presenter with NoTube, I first read Chris's paper. I was just doing a Google search one day, and I first read Chris's paper and found out. I'm like, how interesting is that? So I decided to go ahead and Google uh, tube weaning programs. And there's a few of them out there. Um, again, I, I really found, I was really attracted to NoTube, and they have a great-looking website. I was able to communicate with the people there very quickly. Um, and I was very, very comfortable by the feel that I got with NoTube. And so that's why I was really excited as Patrick Predley, we're very excited to be able to share this research for those that can come off tubes. Um, you know, we, we at Patrick Predley are not physicians. Um, so, you know, we, we're not to say who is and who's not to come off a tube. Again, we just want to share that. Um, but, you know, over people over at NoTube are, Mar uh, Professor Marguerite is, she is a doctor. And uh, I want to go ahead and pass this off to her. And before I do that, for everybody who is new here, I do want to apologize for any glitches that you are currently experiencing. Um, we are doing the best we can. Uh, as Patrick probably were essential, we're in Middle Tennessee right now. And we are, uh, if you see on your screen, um, if, the, my, if my screen is popping up, I, we're having a lot of damage done. I don't have any power, electricity, or internet. Um, so we're going to have several different kind of glitches going on right now. I've had to move uh, everything over to a uh, smaller computer, which does not host the programs that I usually run them on. So um, again, I'm really, ex I'm really excited. And actually, I want to take one more poll with you guys while you're online. Um, this next poll, um, oops. Sad, there's a glitch right there. I just opened up the wrong one. Um, sorry, guys. Give me one more second. Pull this right one up. And we, what we want to find out is, um, have you guys tried tube weaning before? Um, if you just take a few seconds, answer this real quick. Um, either you haven't tried it, or yes, you tried it on your own. Um, yes, you've tried through either occupational therapy, or speech, sometimes speech therapists will kind of get involved there. Um, and then, um, yes, we know that there are aggressive therapy programs out there here in the United States. We've researched many of those. And like Chris brought up, you've got to go out of your house and check all that stuff off. Um, you're out of work, you're traveling expenses, hotel. That's a lot to consider, which is I, another thing. reason I found NoTube so attractive is that you can sit at home and actually do this from home. Um, so that's great. So a little more than half of you have not tried it yet. And um, I do hope that uh, you know this, this really opens your eyes to how to choose the tube weaning program. And I'm going to go ahead and pass this off over to Marguerite. And um, she is a professor over there at NoTube. Let me get you over there real quick, Marguerite. Um, okay, Marguerite, you should be online there. So go ahead and, and share us who you are and what you do. Um, I can't see you right now. There we go. Oh, there you are. 
Just yeah, okay, okay, okay. Hello, um, I would like to say a welcome to all the families and maybe also some professionals who might have joined in to this really quite exciting premiere of a webinar. I think it's probably a world premiere on this topic, and um, I find it really exciting to be to know that. Krista and John um, and myself at the moment are just trying to kind of get together the absolute crucial points, which for me is the kind of professional world thought on it and not the professionals who only put in tubes and then don't care very much what happens to them afterwards, but those pro professionals who are dealing struggling and with more or less success with helping the children get off the tubes who have the biological and medical and development ch mental chance to get off. So I think what is very important as a parent is to know whether your child will need a tube permanently and be as grateful as possible to every single help and support to help the child get the maximum benefits out of this life-saving um, device, or whether your child belongs to the group of probably about 50% of all tube receiving kids, um, which only received the tube for a certain time period of time, which mostly if you ask the doctors before before the tube is given in, they quote something like four to six months. And they mostly will quote a goal which is defined by a weight, depending on how the child is moving on the weight chart. And they'll say something like two or three kilos or before we get him into the 10th, 25th percentile. So all these different arguments um, are indicating that the idea of the person placing the tube is definitely only to place the tube for a temporary period of time of a few months. And what then happens is after these primarily defined goals are met, there suddenly comes a time where the parents say, okay, now like the cast time is over or the, the time of the wheelchair or whatever the device was, and we got a tube with the promise that it would only be for a few months, and now our, ch our child has kind of gotten stuck with it. It's in a dead-end road, and actually it's far worse than that because our whole family life is completely paralyzed by running after our vomiting child and helping it to kind of get over the day. And the child sometimes has hardly any life anymore because it's kind of pending between just being fed, just being not sick, nearly sick again, and really sick. So um, this kind of turns into a nightmare, and it's a kind of an unintended nightmare. None of the doctors who gave the tube but indicated the necessity of the tube were conscious about this possibility happening, but that's exactly why I started 30 years ago and had the big privilege in my University Hospital of Graz to have a boss and a team and colleagues who kind of started working on what are the nutritional and non-nutritional side effects and the ones which are not discussed and the ones which are also not published of the tube feeding operation. And um, this has become kind of my life um, topic, my life issue. I've got to know thousands of survivors of neonatal intensive care, of extreme prematurity, children with practically any diagnosis you can think in the world. Today a child, uh, the parents wrote me where there's only 30 who have this thing in the whole world, but actually the subtype this child has is only this child. So the parents find themselves becoming specialists on the actual reason why the child got a tube, but find themselves very, very lonely in the whole issue of how can we get rid of it. And I, I really 
for the first moment don't want to say much more. Um, uh, John, will I show my slides now? Is that possible technically? Okay, let's try. Can you see my slides? Um, okay, so what do I do, John? I can't hear John right now. Go ahead and hit the uh, show my application and then uh, um, with that show my application you'll be able to click your PDF. Show my. Huh. Show my. So under the screen sharing function. Oh no, that's not where it's at. Got it. Um, um, where it says webcam. Wait, I'll just get my Anna line. Anna. You see here. Um, they're trying to tell me how to start the slideshow. You say go, go to share. And in the meantime, thank you everybody for coming. Still, we have new people still showing up. Um, we still have a few glitches. Uh, Marguerite for with no tube, she's out in Europe right now, and uh, she's doing the best she can to get through into her slides. Um, we have Chrissy, who is the mother, who is the mother of uh, Eli, who went through the tube bleeding program through no tube, and um, I am John Lozoya with Patrick Pedler. We're very excited to be able to bring this to you. We're currently in Crossville, Tennessee, and we have uh, a lot of damage here. So we were still without power, and um, we have no power, no internet, and uh, we're freezing, facing freezing temperatures with yet more winter storm to come um, tonight. Um, so we're hunkered down, staying warm the best we can. And for those of you that are our customers, that we will be sure to get your orders out for sure. Uh, we are keeping track our internet, so. Uh, our internet systems keeping track of that we don't have access and we'll be sure to get those to you just as soon as we can um, again folks will be re we will be recording this session for you and anybody that will um, find us on YouTube it's uh, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Peddler is a YouTube channel we've got several things there for Tubies and we can share uh, we got several freebies on there that you can see as well and we'll be host probably listening to this sometime this week um, in addition, we uh, will also be sending you any PDFs that we go through um, from here and uh, that we were going through. Okay, it looks like Marguerite's getting back on with her, and I'll turn it back over to her. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. We got you. Go ahead, Marguerite. Um, can you see now the slides? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the first slide, I'll just slip you through the thing. Actually, we do not know how many children who get a tube become actually dependent on a feeding tube. We're just now doing a research on that, but we think that it's about one in a hundred um, because a whole lot more children get the tube after birth in the course of their prematurity or in the course of neonatal operations or severe breathing problems and most of the children are able to leave the NICU after a few months without the tube luckily. So we are talking about those tubes and probably the parents who are now in with us are the parents of children who have had a situation like this lovely picture of Eli where you can see that there's issues of the children with the tube itself. You can become, your development is so preoccupied with all, dealing with all the side effects of being tube fed, which is a completely unphysiological and unnatural way of direct bypassing the mouth and the esophagus and getting your food kind of avalanched into your stomach. Um, I mean, w w without any warning, um, there are a few very interesting new research on the bacterial and flora in our gut, which are influenced differently if your food is poured in in this tube way. 
our also our appetite regulation completely collapses because normally if you think of food or see food or see other people eating, there's a kind of uh, brain release of enzyme and hormones which help to um, stimulate what you need to digest well. And all these things don't happen when the, when the formula is poured directly into the stomach. So up to 50%, 50% of all children vomit nearly constantly and as a result have an extremely impaired social life um, and some of them actually can't even leave the home because the parents just don't know how to deal with this incredible stress. The parents themselves, of course, in, in a certain way are absolute heroes but they actually become very, very desperate and depressed and it is a kind of very deep and cruel, it, it's a kind of an offense to your own identity and wish to care and love for your child in a complete way if you're not allowed to feed your child or if you find yourself not able. And this kind of primary offense to what is natural in people, to a part of your most um, natural attachment system, is something that parents can hardly actually talk about because they can't share it with anybody except maybe other parents who, who have the same situation. But most of their friends and neighbors, they, they, they will become more and more isolated because nobody will actually understand what's going on. And um, it's, it's something which you, become, which you become kind of ashamed of and learn to live with it, but in a deep down way, you're not happy at all. And the healthcare system, these are the third uh, thing, is something where we have to discuss about um, financial aspects and in any case the quality of life, which is reduced, and also the lack of um, tube management facilities, which practically accounts for all bigger institutions. Now, what, what we have developed over the last six years in no tube is that we found that we need solutions to deal with families who are close and not close. So the families who are very far from living in Austria and who can't even dream of making a journey with their child um, to Europe would be candidates for the net coaching program, which is a now very, very well developed uh, program. We've done about 450 children now in a four to six week mostly lasting online coaching process with several contacts per day. We have an extremely high success rate and worldwide we are the only team which offers this telemedical um, intensive phase and then our aftercare of 35 days after the very last tube, has, uh, tube feed has been given. And we also invest a lot of team energy. We have two um, team members who are actually mainly doing the scientific workup and the evidence-based uh, research to write scientific papers to present in scientific um, gastroenterological and pediatric conferences and to make sure that we are not seen as a group who's crazy but seen and recognized and have a good reputation as a group of serious professionals. The second thing which you can see here are the eating schools which are kind of intensive programs of two weeks where the families can do this during the online but also or after or instead of. Um, we mostly gather about 15 families in one place and we have done now seven of these eating schools in France, Germany um, and Austria and this year we are going to do a one in Holland and you can look at our website to get the dates. The Learn to Eat is the program we developed because we noticed that after the tube is out and after the tube is uh, the child is not receiving any 
tube feeds anymore, um, there still can be issues and concerns and the child will not likely, after very few days or two or three weeks, be eating age appropriately. So the Learn to Eat pro uh, program is a very intensive, also again, online, everyday contact with our therapists um, to help your child adjust to age appropriate feeding after it had a tube or also for children who have what we call selective, highly selective eating habits. Now here you see wonderful little Eli who we were really, really happy um, to join in his very smooth and swift winning and a part of it was Eli was dressed in the perfect age. We always love to get the children around between 6 and 12 months because their natural drive is just, I want to do it, and they don't have so many psychological inhibiting th thinking factors yet. And secondly, um, Eli's mom, Krista, was just a perfect mom to follow with this process to um, define her worries very open, openly and to discuss um, everything which has to do with the whole process. Um, I think you've heard before the wonderful presentation Krista gave. Um, there's nothing I can say then thank you, Krista. I think it's been incredible to hear a mum talk about this whole process. I think there's nothing more convincing than parents themselves for other parents and I really just want to say thank you to you. Now I think this is already the last slide, how you can get in touch. Um, we have a free um, interview of 20 minutes where you can talk to one of our team members um, after signing up for it and just find out whether we think that your child might be appropriate or even suitable. You can discuss the medical diagnosis, you can show us your child and we can then recommend you to make an assessment. The assessment will then um, cost $150 once and is evaluated by two independent pediatricians who will then decide whether the child is suitable or might even advise which of the methods online or on-site would be more recommended. And um, well, that's about all I would like to say now for the first moment and go back to giving us enough time to answer your direct questions afterward. Is that okay with you, um, John? Is that okay with you? Okay, okay I'm back on now here. Um, I can't see Okay, my microphone should be back on now. Um, and here's uh, right now. You guys are seeing just the pictures I have up right now. This is about all I can all I can show. The slides and everything that I've got going on uh, can't be viewed, but this is my neighborhood of where I'm living at right now. So it was a challenge getting here. Glad I could be here. Um, thank you, everybody, Krista and Marguerite, for both showing up. Um, we know this is a very controversial issue um, amongst the feeding tube world and the community right now. Um, again, we know that not everybody um, can come off a feeding tube. Feeding tubes are very positive. They are life-saving in many, many issues. Um, I mean, especially with my own personal experience, my daughter Karina, we know that it saved her life. We know she couldn't survive without it, and we know she would never come off of it. Now, we lost her many years ago, and those things would have never changed. She had so many things wrong, and we're very blessed to have the feeding tube experience that we did, and to have gone through what we went through and have the feeding tube. But we do want to help also encourage those and be very helpful for those that can feed tube. Because a lot of people are going to occupational therapy and speech therapy to do tube weaning. And that's who we really want to reach out to and really help out. Um, we do have one more poll that we want to share with you guys. Um, when We want to find out when you guys are looking to tube wean. Uh, we know that some people are ready right now. They've already tried a few programs. hasn't worked out for them. They've already wasted some money. Um, that kind of thing. Um, some people are like, well, it's in our near near future. Um, so if that's you, go ahead and click on there. If you're like, well, in next year or longer than that, um, let us know too. We just kind of want to see where, where our audience is 
um, you know, we again, we know that sometimes we have the feeding tube and everything, and when we're stressed out with a huge mess that's going on, all the preparation that's going on, um, we're like, okay, you know, we're at wit's end. We're, we're human. We're parents. We go through all that. Um, so we, we understand we want it, you know, we want all this to end sometimes, so we're looking for something out farther in the future. Um, we say that almost half of you are pretty much ready right now, which is great. Um, you know, a few people are looking out to be um, a few months from now, from one to six months. That's great. Fantastic. Um, let me go ahead and try to show some of the slides that we've got going on. I'll try to pull this up one more time. If uh, Krista and Mark, Dr. Marguerite could also leave, up your, leave your microphones on. We do have some questions uh, that some folks ha have answered. Uh, if we see anything else, go ahead and new come in. You guys, um, our audience, will you please take a few moments, type in any questions that you have. Um, this webinar will be recorded and we'll be broadcasting that on our YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com forward slash, forward slash Hatchwork Peddler. And um, you can find it there. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, please take a second, write them in the comments box. We'll be happy to do that. Um, Marguerite, if you're, um, I noticed you're having a little difficulties with the webinar software. Um, so if you look down where it says questions, um, you'll be able to see um, the spots where some people have asked some questions in regards to uh, NoTube. Um, there's been a few questions there directed for you. And of course, we see you had a few questions yourself come up. So if you could take a few minutes, maybe you verbally answer some of the questions that, that are there. Um, so that everybody hears your questions. Uh, sure. So um, let's see if I can remember correctly. Um, Eli was 13 months old when we started to wean him, um, nine months old developmentally, roughly, because he was four months early. Um, he's now, um, will be two and a half at the beginning of April. Um, so he's been tube-free since November of 2013, um, so a little over a year. Um, uh, questions about communication um, with the team. Um, we did not have any problems at all. Everybody on the team speaks fluent English as well as many more languages than I speak. Um, and it was um, mostly done via um, a secure online um, forum so I could submit questions and tell them what Eli was eating and when. Um, we also sent them videos of Eli eating um, and how we interacted with Eli. And then um, they would give us feedback on how to adjust because it's not just about the child, it's also about the environment. Um, um, let's see here, those were questions. Um, also, um, Eli was um, roughly in the 50th percentile for weight um, before we started tube feeding uh, or before we started the wean. Um, he, he was overfed. That was the problem with all of the vomiting. Um, he, um, once we stopped the, the um, tube feeding, he immediately stopped vomiting and stopped the medications and then was, was able to start eating. Um, now he hangs out at about the 35th to 40th percentile for weight um, for his actual age. Um, let me see here. Um, I think if we can answer this question, I think I know the answer. Um, nine, the ninety percent success rate with no tube. Um, my in understanding is that those kids, ninety percent of kids who do the um, net coaching, um, are tube free at the end of their um, at the end of their um, wean. That means that they are not getting any more tube feeds at all. Correct, Marguerite? Yeah. Um, so it's not that they just t eat a little bit. That's I think four and a half percent of the of the kiddos. Um, they still are are eating, they're eating orally, but then they're also getting um, some amount of tube feeds. It's about four and a half percent of the kiddos, right? Yes, and yeah. um, we only consider a child weaned if for the last 35 days it has had no tube feeds at all, is having stable weight, and the parents are feeling confident and comfortable. If this is not, if any of these variables is not given, the wean can be continued for as long as up to one year. So this is, it, it lets us be very individual, it lets us get quickly through with the quick ones, but it also gives uh, children with sensory issues and disabilities of all different kinds, hypotonic and so on, the opportunity to be much more gentle um, and to take account to the very specific medical issues or developmental issues. Right, so I know as a, as a parent I've gotten that question many times, how can they promise me that my kid's going to be weaned in 35 days? 
that's not what they're they're promising you that your child will be weaned and thirty five days after their last tube free to make sure that um that they are in fact tube free. And then um so so some people take longer than others. So it's not just a promise in thirty five days, but you have support thirty five days beyond your last tube feed. And we have individual cases, maybe five a year, who take practically a year. Uh, it's it's the minority, but one just needs a very flexible and adaptive uh, approach to to make account for the enormous individual differences in developmental and medical issues which each child has. Um, John, I can't see any questions, so maybe you just help me hear the questions which might be answered by me because I'm not getting them on the chat. Oh, we can't hear you, John. Um, I'll help, I'll help kind of moderate here. Okay, so um, um, one more question. Um, have I found speech pathologists are more or less conservative or cautious with respect to weaning than doctors? Um, our, our speech therapist um, was actually very supportive and she was giving us all of the same, um, I would say, kind of tools um, with the exception that she wasn't allowed to authorize us to decrease tube feeds, which is what um, no tube was, um, the medical supervision was important for for us. Um, I don't know, Marguerite, if you're, what your experience is with um, speech pathologies. I work daily with speech pathologists, but unfortunately not a single one has ever had one hour lecture specialized on this issue. So I've, I dare to say that no speech pathologist in the world has had a specific training with respect to the specific needs during and before the wean. So I find them very helpful in preparation of decrease of oral aversion and um, getting hands on the food and getting maybe the tongue um, licking food, but they are absolutely neither prepared nor authorized to take parents and children through a weaning process. Okay, um, and then another question for you. Um, what do you do if a child is not ready for a program after an initial assessment? Um, and then, sorry, I'm going to double up the, on this. Um, what are some indicators to know whether or not your child is ready to wean? Well, the readiness has really two aspects. Um, the one is the kind of developmental readiness of the child. Is it like if the parents say, my child can drink 30 milliliters, then it's ready. If the parents say, my child can actually bite cookies, then it's ready. But if the parents say, my child won't even let a drop of water touch its lips or go into its mouth, it will be terrified, then we will need a few weeks of preparation. And in those cases, we then recommend to take one or two months of the Learn to Eat program to help the child prepare. And the second issue is one has to be sure that the medical teams who know the child and have been taking care of the child wish that the child is weaned now. And in children with oncological um, cancer issues, in children with big cardiac operations, children with transplantations, one just has to make sure that the timing is shared by the responsible doctors the child is dealing with. And in these cases, we, ha we ask the parents to either make the, let us make the contact to their doctors or make the parents ask the doctors where, whether everybody involved in the local team is sure that now is the right time to do the wean. So we, we kind of secure, um, I don't want parents to get into a loyalty conflict with their own teams and kind of do a, a secret wean behind the back. I don't want that in, in no case. I, th this would be very, it, it would be absolutely against my appreciation for colleagues in my own um, in, in my own country and also abroad because I know how much time and, and investment has gone into helping these children survive what they've all been through and I just want to try and get everybody involved to join to say now it should happen and we're all sure that the child with the right support can make this step. 
Okay. Um, let me see here. There's lots of questions. A lot of these are specific about um, spe specific children with specific uh, disorders and whether or not they can be weaned and age specific. So we'll probably answer those um, offline via email. Yes, okay. I'm very prepared to do that in the course of the next three or four days. I can okay. I can promise to answer each question um, raised by the parents. If it's an individual one, it would be better to um, to do this via email. Yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that I'm seeing the questions, but I think that they're too specific for us to um, address right now. Um, and then. Um, um, let me see here. What is a typical day like when you start the program? How long and how often do you do the therapy? Um, it's kind okay. of an interesting question. I can answer that quickly. My typical day is that I get up at around 6 in the morning. I do the first cyber round and look how many patients are kind of in the cyber waiting room, which will usually be between 10 and 20 between midnight and 6 in the morning Central European time, I get all the parents in from Asia and America and Australia and I get their intake protocols which were written the evening before. So I make the suggestions for the next day for the children and mostly these parents get to me once in 24 hours. But if the, ch if the parents are really anxious and if the child shows any unexpected um, reaction to the reduction of, of the suggested tube feeds, then we can be in contact up to four or five times a day. But this, I would say, is pretty only, it happens like a small crisis might happen with a child in the first or second week be, before the parents are really a, adjusted to this new way of working. They might feel nervous, but we answer them very, very quickly, and the, the normal pace is to have contact with this once or twice in 24 hours. Yeah, and for us, um, um, a typical day um, started with no two. <laughs> um, we, um, we were given a specific amount of, of uh, food, so they decreased our, our tube volume a certain uh, percentage and told when to start tube feeds during the day. Um, and so there's not a starting therapy, if you will. It was more about backing off and letting food be in the environment and letting your child decide when to interact with that. Um, which, as a tube, as a, is the parent of a tubey, who I was given very specific instructions about how often and what volume and at what rate to feed my child. That's probably the hardest part. It's almost the parent that's weaning at the beginning and not the child because you're having to release control of of having to do all of those things and being able to control them. Instead, you're backing off and letting, giving your child the opportunity to decide when they want to explore food um, and when they want to eat. And there were some nights when we were up at 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. because Eli was hungry. And so we would get up and I would pull out the tray of random assortment of foods, um, which oddly enough was never purees for him. Um, he went straight to solids. Um, Still does not care much for anything that's that's puree based. I did see that question in there, um, and we just let him um, play with food um, for a while. There, it was not at the table. He would sit on my lap, much like he is now when I'm eating, and he would reach for my plate. Um, but we did not set him in his chair with food in front of him every two hours. Um, this is um, actually quite common that yeah. children after the age of twelve months sometimes skip the whole blended food spoon feed uh, phase and they go straight to solids because they want to have the control themselves and they'll, they'll just skip it which is like some children start walking without crawling. There, there's no problem at, uh, in itself in this uh, jump. Yeah. Um, Marguerite, you and I talked about this yesterday. Um, do many children have a relapse like Eli did where they come off of the feeding tube at the, in the NICU and then go back on it later we, about a medical issue. That's usually what yes, happens. That's, that's actually very, very, very typical. That's, I would say, the majority. Um, the majority probably leaves. We, we don't quite have numbers on this yet because it's actually very hard to, in retrospect, analyze it. But the most children were off tube feeds maybe 
for two or three months and then reach the age of about six, seven months when the problem, when kind of more pressure comes, the child becomes very much an individual being, wants to control more itself, starts eating less because the pressure goes up and then the tube is put in very often between the sixth and the eighth month and then we're really psychologically in the middle of a very conflictuous uh, developmental age when suddenly the whole question of I want to control my mouth myself suddenly is just wiped away and taken over by the tube so the kid really bounces back um, developmentally and um, kind of goes into a kind of oral regression um, and parents often say then because the doctors said we'll only tube feed a little and the child will will sustain eating himself but the child kind of just gives up and this is the most common within days the child thinks um, it's not worth eating anymore because this, this the tube is doing it anyway so um, Eli's uh, the, the dynamics in Eli's first year of life is very, very typical. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's another question here about what was, how much was Eli eating before starting the program, and was he eating purees or solids? Um, you can probably speak to most kids, but Eli was, um, he would mouth food. Um, he would take small amounts um, of, what was it? I think applesauce and um, Slim Jims. I don't even know why my kid was eating Slim Jims, but he would he would take small bites of those, but nothing measurable. Um, he refused purees, and I even made them at home from scratch to avoid the extra additives that added different flavors, and he would not eat them. So, if we get the information that the child is eating anything between five and ten percent of its required amounts, we are actually quite thrilled already. Um, but it's rarely more and, and we don't care whether the child is eating only solids, partially solids or only purees. It doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter. Right. Um, I remember that there was another parent, um, I'm not sure if she's watching or not, um, who, who was upset that her kiddo um, was only taking purees and not um, drinking from the bottle during the wean. And then her, her kiddo started uh, taking uh, purees, and then she was like, wait, it's easier to give the bottle. All of a sudden, she got what she wanted, <laughs> and, then, and then she, wasn't, uh, she, was, she was frustrated with it. But, uh, but now her, her little girl um, eats the same as, as her other kids do, um, and, yeah. and she's happy. So it's just one of those things where you kind of have to let your child well, take control. Often the plan of the child is not the same as the plan of the adults. And the adults kind of have in mind the plan which is recommended by the Nutritional Association of the country, but this is recommended for healthy children with normal developmental milestones in all their development. And eating development for a tube-fed child is not happening. It has to start practically from zero again. So um, we are very happy if a child actually comes back to learn to eat from the drink from the bottle, um, this is quite rare because usually if you haven't learned to sustain your sucking swallowing coordination after about seven months it can't be reactivated. So bottle drinking is if a child does bottle drink at all we are very happy and we try to convince and explain to the parents that they should be happy because it's kind of the most time-saving way to get good calories and good nutrition into the child. But of course, from that step on, one must move forwards. Can't hear you, John. Um, oops. Let me look in the chat here to see if you're... I can, I can hear you. Um, yeah. Are you. Are you trying to wrap up, John? Okay. <laughs> All right, so if you guys answered questions and we didn't get to them, um, we will email you. Someone will email you um, and answer those questions for you. Um, I do believe John is also going to send out an email to everybody to, uh, with a link to the, uh, a recorded version of the webinar as well as the um, prize winners for the, um, the giveaways that there were. 
and um, NoTube can be found at uh, NoTube.com as well as on Facebook. Um, Patchwork Peddler has their own website. Uh, both of them have YouTube channels as well with more information on them. Um, John, I'm looking in the chat function if there's anything else you'd like me to add. <laughs> oh, if you'd like to get a hold of me, um, I um, am happy for you guys to email me if you have questions to share my experience um, or um, Eli's um, page. Uh, my email address is, is krista.perujito at gmail.com. Um, you can find Eli's um, tube weaning page on Facebook at no tube for Eli.com or no, sorry, facebook.com forward slash no tube for Eli. Um, there's a ton of resources on, on both uh, the no tube and patchwork peddler websites for, for everybody. Um, and thank you for joining us and Dr. Shear, Dr. Dennis Shear for sharing your, your expertise in the matter. And, and John, um, as, as the, the seller of tube products <laughs> for advocating for, um, for tube weaning, um, it's again, like you said, not every, child can wean, but for those who can, um, I think it, it's important to, to do it sooner rather than later, um, and it just makes a huge difference in everybody's lives. So thank you for both of you guys for, for helping with this today. Thank you very much, Krista and John, for making this possible, and I'd love to try and maybe start with both of you a kind of lecture webinar um, series. I think it would be really lovely to do this something like once a month. And we will decide on which issues we will specifically look at. And I promise to answer all the emails which come in uh, with the help of both of you. Um, I'll give the time and my experience to answer them, but I'm not technically able. Uh, I need your help. And I think that this was a wonderful, um, a wonderful premiere of this technology. And I'll be also um, very enthusiastic sharing my experience of the, of the whole event with all my team members, whom I think a few of which have been joining in and watching. We are distributed pretty much in different continents at the moment. So um, I know that also the psychological and the um, sensory and the posture related. So a lot of lot of topics have not even been touched today, which um, which would be very worthwhile also looking at. And I hope we will do this again. Thanks for everybody's attention and um, and time uh, and sharing their questions. And uh, to reach us is very easy. It's not YouTube. It's notube.com. Bye-bye to everybody. All right. Bye, everyone.